Hello, welcome to our series of digital slide presentations and case discussions here at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, Professor of Pathology, and I'm pleased to present a day, today a case with uh, some interesting implications in radiology uh, and pathology, and probably also a number of other fields, including psychology and other uh, aspects of the uh, clinical uh, scenario. Uh, I've titled the talk, uh, Hiding a Tumor in Sorrows, largely because the patient came in after a, uh, a prolonged period of neglect uh, of uh, this uh, particular issue. Uh, he had suffered some uh, life stresses and, and setbacks, and along with that had experienced a very sizable uh, weight gain, uh, which perhaps masked the, masked the presence of uh, the problem until it became uh, rather uh, difficult to, to cope with. Uh, the story was some pain as he was sleeping um, and uh, difficulty uh, and even a palpable mass eventually became evident. Uh, the plain films were not terribly remarkable, although uh, initial physical exam had indicated that there was quite a large mass along the uh, aspect of his left hip and uh, extending uh, downward towards the thigh. Uh, on the plain films, I think you can see that there's a, a disruption or an irregularity of the uh, cortical uh, margin here with this uh, somewhat lobulated uh, calcified uh, mass extending outward. Uh, and then you can see here, it does have a, a small connection to the apparent cortex, uh, but uh, it uh, is extending outward from that cortex. So uh, with that radiologic appearance, you might think uh, first off of things like uh, osteochondroma and so forth. But then uh, once you see the and feel the rest of the mass, uh, you uh, begin to alter that uh, impression. Uh, because here, as you can see, is uh, a rather bulky mass extending outward as multiple centimeters. Um, and here we can see this little point of attachment with a little bit of calcification or bony type matrix up here but all of this dark space, non-fatty containing space, um, and here on the liquid sequences uh, having a high uh, fluid content. Uh, um, uh, we've got another view of it here, I believe, which will also show uh, that this tumor on the <coughs> coronal section, or excuse me, on the uh, transverse sections, has a bit of lobulation to it, uh, which is uh, fairly characteristic of, of this tumor. It's quite homogeneous. Um, and with this high fluid content, uh, we would certainly be thinking of uh, uh, lesions like chondroid lesions. Uh, we would wonder about other possibilities, hematomas and so forth, uh, but uh, there's no fluid uh, air, fluid de densities, and uh, no, uh, trans no other changes associated with the uh, positional changes of this uh, lesion. So, um, with uh, that uh, fairly uh, sharply circumscribed margin um, and the likely origin from a, a pedicle of osteochondroma, uh, the uh, working diagnosis was that of a low-grade chondroid tumor, uh, which uh, would need to be uh, locally excised. <clears throat> and here we can see, again, uh, the uh, lobulated character of it here on this fat-weighted uh, T1 sequence with this uh, little portion of more bony type tissue up proximal and a little bit of uh, connection there. And you can see that it's going in uh, multiple directions as it sort of dissects through the, the planes of the, of the soft tissue. There we are again. So um, this is a, a representative section of the uh, uh, attachment of the uh, lesion to the uh, underlying bone. You can see we have a narrow pedicle here with a cartilaginous portion of tissue up here uh, with a, a few areas here of uh, nice endochondral type ossification. Now in an individual in their adulthood beyond uh, puberty and so forth, we shouldn't be seeing this type of endochondral ossification. Uh, in really in any site, all of the epiphyses are closed. Um, and so this uh, represents uh, certainly uh, pathognomonic features of an osteochondroma. 
uh, or potentially an, an enchondroma with invasive uh, features, but given the radiology, uh, we're working on that diagnosis. We can see that underlying his marrow, he's got a his normal cellular hematopoietic marrow, his uh, bony trabeculae appear fairly unremarkable here. Um, and uh, so uh, that is our, our working diagnosis from the pedicle. Well, what does the tumor look like elsewhere? <clears throat> On sectioning, this was remarkably homogeneous, a very uh, glistening uh, uh, type of pattern that you would expect from a cartilaginous tumor. And here, as we see under uh, section, uh, <clears throat> the uh, same is true. We can appreciate that lobularity that we saw on uh, the uh, MRI scan. Um, and as we look at this tumor, we see Again, a sharp margin, but some dissection into soft tissue, um, a butting up against skeletal muscle here. Um, and as we look at the uh, individual uh, lacunae, we can see um, you know, a few sort of multicellular um, lacunae, such as here, multibinucleation or multinucleation in some of these uh, lacunae, uh, but overall a nice uh, chondroid matrix. Uh, this uh, pattern and appearance uh, with minimal atypia, few binucleated cells and so forth in the uh, <clears throat> uh, proximal axial flat bones and so forth uh, would certainly be, be considered a low-grade chondrosarcoma. Uh, maybe in a uh, distal long bone, uh, you might think about an enchondroma or something like that. But in this setting, uh, we're looking at a low-grade cartilaginous uh, neoplasm. Uh, where locally, local recurrence is the main concern um, rather than distant metastasis, provided, of course, that we do not have any evidence of uh, dedifferentiation or higher grade areas. And here we can see at this growing edge, again, a little bit more of this busier multinucleation, multicellular um, uh, occupancy of each of these uh, lacunae. Well, uh, chondrosarcoma and osteochondroma do have a relationship. Um, and secondary chondrosarcomas are recognized to arise from uh, osteochondroma on occasion. Usually they're not quite as uh, florid and dramatic as in this particular case. Um, and it's usually some sort of change in size or pain or other symptom that brings these osteochondroma-derived uh, chondrosarcomas to attention. Um, more recently, these low-grade chondrosarcomas in the appendicular skeleton have been also termed the atypical cartilaginous tumor to emphasize their uh, low risk of recurrence and perhaps to correspond more, careful, more closely to the um, behavior that we would uh, ascribe to um, you know, the atypical lipomatous tumors, for example. Uh, these do have a very high cure rate and very low re recurrence rate. Uh, with virtually no distant metastasis. So again, the surgical margin is uh, critical to uh, control and management. So uh, there we have our final sign out diagnosis is atypical cartilaginous tumor, grade one chondrosarcoma of the secondary type arising from an osteochondroma. Well, we hope you enjoyed that case and that if you do, that you will uh, hit that subscribe button so that you'll catch future releases. We have a variety of uh, case types uh, that we try to cover, as well as uh, occasional programs with guest uh, faculty, guest instructors, and uh, guest topics. Um, it's our pleasure to provide these to you as an educational service, and we hope that uh, you'll provide uh, feedback on things you'd like to see covered on our program in the future. Um, so with that, I'll uh, say thank you for joining me, and until next time, it's been a pleasure. Hope to see you again soon.